Welcome to Ball and Chain Podcast. This is episode 157. I'm Max Moore again. I have with me a very tired. <sighs> it's my angel. Hello. What's happening? Oh, not a whole lot. Um, this is our third week in a row. It is our third week in a row. That was not me. That was probably the dog. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Right. Anyway. Um, not a whole lot, honestly. Getting rid of the snow that came this weekend. Oh my god! It is the Starting first to week, the first week of of spring, and we have here in Ohio four inches of snow, like in less than an hour. Which we drove through. Which we drove through, but it wasn't all that bad. I mean, we drove home. We drove back probably about what two and a half, three hours, and like the last twenty minutes was snowfall so it wasn't all that bad not as bad as some have thought it would have been but you know nonetheless um yeah so um went up to the parents house what else did we do this past week not a whole hell of a lot this is my <laughs> first uh first week well i worked all last week so this is my first three days off in two weeks so i'm excited about that got a lot done as far as uh, around the house yeah. goes a couple a uh, couple nights of magic this week. Uh, we had uh, Jenny and Ruben over for uh, magic, and uh, they got engaged this weekend. So congrats yep. to them. Congrats. Um, we played some magic up in Tiffin. Yeah, and then we had Jenny over last night. Last night? Mm-hmm. Was it really last night? All yeah, right. that was Monday night. Monday night magic. Holy cow. My days are blurring together. Um so, uh, yeah, we've played a lot of Magic. All in all, I had, I mean, I've changed a bunch of my decks around. I I went through my Is It deck that I had built for the Ravnica release, um, built that up uh, a couple nights ago, took out a, a lot of the crappy, more expensive spells from the Is It block, or Is It uh, clan or whatever, Grill Guild or whatever they want to call them, um, and mixed in some of the Boros uh uh, battalion creatures, uh, a lot of the smaller creatures. So not only did I bring my um, casting cost of my of my deck down, but I also fulfilled like a, a need that was there from is it doesn't have a lot of like heavy hitting or heavy either heavy hitting or you know big blockers um, from that guild. So it really like it helped out quite a bit. Uh, I just need to do a little bit of perfecting. Um, but other than that, I'm really I'm really pleased, much more so than that deck was before Bor- Boros came along. And um, you and your dad and brother made playmats for us. Yeah, we tried. It didn't work out very well. Um, we're gonna we've got another another um, technique that we're gonna be using. We uh, this time my dad's only got a printer that'll print you know 11 by 14 paper, so. You know, you're confined to 11 inches wide, so we had to use three sheets of it to make one. Which, the ones that we made, the test ones, weren't too bad, but just having to line them up sucked. It was a real pain in the ass. So we, um, I think we are going to go with a vinyl, like the same vinyl that we use for the t-shirts, and just make it all one sheet. Like, you know, a couple things, you know, you won't have to lay, you know, each piece and try to line it up or whatever. Um, you'll be able to, you know, press it, move it, press it, move it. This will be, you know, it'll be all one sheet. Uh, the color is going to be more more vibrant, um, and the the picture quality is going to be much crisper with the the vinyl prints. So, I'm kind of excited about that. We'll see how that goes. But the first first two didn't turn out that bad. It took about an hour to make for each of them, so it's not very time effective. But you know, <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, but uh, you want to just go ahead and get into it? I guess I'll talk about what I've planned to talk about since Angel really hasn't prepared for this episode. I didn't have, I didn't have anything going on this weekend. Like, like I said, we went to your parents' house, got the kids' haircut. That's been the, the brunt mm. of what I've done. There was a movie that you had purchased. We've purchased two movies. We purchased The Hobbit. We and talked Lay about Mims. that last week. Did we? Yeah, we talked about Did The I Hobbit. Did I buy it Monday night, maybe? Um, probably. I don't it know. It didn't come out till Tuesday. We couldn't have talked about it. Yeah, we talked about The Hobbit. We didn't talk about Les Mis. Les Mis didn't come out till Friday. Right. So if you want to talk about Les Mis, you can talk about Les Mis. Go uh, for it. All right. Um, I didn't really get to watch. I mean, we had it playing in the background while we were while we were playing Magic the other night. So uh, really, I didn't watch the beginning, the beginning of it. Um, 
but uh, I'm very familiar with like this the the show and um, seen the it on Broadway stage quite musical. a few. Yeah, seen seen it on stage quite a few times. Um, I think they did a really a really nice job with it. Um, I know I know some of the critics weren't all. Uh, it won all like that. four Golden Globes and like nominated. For, I don't know. I was reading the cover of it, and that's what it said. Yeah, I mean. It did get some awards and stuff, but some of like the some of the bigger critics, I don't know, they didn't seem to really care for some of the acting, I guess. But it's a lot of singing, uh, obviously. That's pretty much all it is. Um, and I felt like I I don't know. I felt like the the characters had emotion. I feel like if you know the stage show and you like it um, in the theater, you'll like. I think I would think you'd like it on in the movie format. Um, it. You know, when you're when you're sitting so far back, it's hard to see everything. Um, I think it gives it a little more, re- obviously, a little more realism. You know, a little more like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't even know how when to I say saw it. I'm, so, I'm, t- I'm time rambling when, and I'm so t- when I'm I saw tired. It, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, I, I went and saw it with you in the on on stage. And I did, I mean, I remembered a couple of the, the main scenes or whatever, like the one where they have all the, the junk piled up in the street or whatever. I remember that scene or whatever. The that barricade. Was very, that was very iconic. But like you said, like you really didn't get a chance to sit down and actually watch, watch it. It was more or less listening to it. Um, uh, seeing it on stage is one thing and, and it's amazing and it's awesome, but um, you don't get quite the sense of scale I guess, you know, that you can get in a movie, Mm -hmm. you know, you're seeing just this little barricade and you have to kind of imagine in your head kind of what, what else the surrounding areas are, you know, you know, you're not picturing it as this whole big city of Paris that they're in. Right. Um, That, you know, in a movie you're, you're given all that extra scenery and the extra, you know, um, detail. Yeah. That that, that you're not going to see in the stage. So I think it brings it to life um, just a little bit more. Okay. Well, I I mean for I, I mean it was it was good background music <laughs> <laughs> for magic. <laughs> Talking singing about prostitutes and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. That's Lima's mm-hmm. prostitutes and barricades. Pretty much. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. All right. Well, is there any, is there is there any other movies that you're looking forward to or nothing you can't think of? Okay. Anyway. All right. Well, we'll move right along. It's going to be a rather short show. I'm sorry. It's all good. We'll have to make up. You'll have to make up for it next week to be prepared. I'll have to have some time to actually do something next week to, to have to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> um, all right. So what I would like to talk about uh, started playing is my first impressions of Dead Space 3. Um, first and foremost, I am horrible at PC games. I've come to realize this. I'm trying to break. Like, like the first time I started playing this game, um, like my fingers were just not all there. Like uh, this this uh, W A S D thing and shift to run and I don't know. I wasn't holding the computer right to like line my fingers up, but once I tilted the computer the keyboard the right way, my my hand is like all of a sudden just aligned. I'm like, oh, that's probably what they want you to do. Well, and it it makes a, it's a little more difficult on a laptop versus a desktop too i think because you have a little more flexibility with the keyboard and screen yeah that's true um on a desktop than you would so a laptop. yeah uh, so to kind of con- combat that i lean, lean tilted the computer they just did like the detroit lean like this no um but it works i mean i i finally you know it's it's kind of like one of those things where you're like it just clicks. I'm like, okay, so this is how they want you to, you know, I'm like trying to push the shift button with my middle finger and it's just I'm like, this is not working. So like the controllers right off the bat, like pissed me off and I actually contemplated moving, you know, moving some of the buttons around, but I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I kind of stuck through it, you know, through that first like half hour, 45 minutes and actually got the, you know, got the hang of it. Um, but, um, the one thing that I did know, well, I, first off, let me say this. I've played all the way through dead space one, um and haven't played Dead Space two at all, so I'm kind of completely lost in like as far as the story goes. So I knew that going into this, I'm just like you know I'm just gonna play because I really enjoyed the mechanic of shooting off the limbs of these you know necromorphs and they're all gangly things and there's you know there's like four or five different types of enemies and you know I'm sure they're gonna make a comeback or whatever plus whatever's from the second one. Um, so 
I was really more or less in, in it for like the, the scary thrill that Dead Space 1 had. Um, I'm about an hour, hour and 20 minutes in. Um, haven't really got that scare tactic in quite yet. But the one thing that they have got in like at the very beginning was a bring you up to speed type of video. Um, and I know you can go to YouTube and, you know, like fan, fans of the games and all this will kind of bring you up to speed as to what's happened in the series so far. I just, you know, one thing that I love is when I put a new game in, the developers and the publishers come together and make a really nice high quality video of what's happened so far. And what EA and I think it's Visceral Games did was they even went further back and kind of explained the origin of what happened before Dead Space and kind of what created the, you know, it's like these these um, black markers or whatever, these these relics that are creating these necromorphs or whatever are, are deforming human beings and, and shit like that, which, you know, I played Dead Space a long, long time ago, so I'm sure it was some part in the story or maybe it was one of those logs that you were supposed to find that I really didn't care about. Like, I don't care about that. I just want to shoot shit. Um, but it was really nice seeing like a high quality, you know, it's about a four or five minute video that brings you up to speed to what's been, you know, what's been going on. It brings in Isaiah Clark, you know, from the first one and talks about him and kind of, and you could tell, like, I could definitely tell like, oh shit, that must have happened in the second one because I don't remember this dude getting stabbed with a needle in the eye and brainwashed and like he's kind of like really psychotic now and and now he's, you know, the government's watching him and so he's this huge government conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theorist and like I'm just like, oh wow, this, I kind of want to go back and play too now. Like this little video did, uh, I guess did it a justice because it's um, definitely want to play through it. Um, but overall, I wish more games would do that going forward. Um, I wish the publishers would kind of give you um, this is what's been happening type of thing. Even if you've already played it, it's just nice to see like that, you know, from their point of view, you know, maybe some of the things that weren't added in the game. Well, I mean, think about Halo. How many years has it been since we've played Halo 1? Yeah. I mean, ten was it 10, 13, something? 10 some years. kind of crazy... I don't remember what the heck happened in that game. I played through it, mm -hmm. but I don't remember the whole timeline of events. So, I mean, it definitely would be kind of a nice thing that they could do to kind of be like, hey, remember that thing that you did 10 years ago? Yeah, this is where it fits in the grand scheme of things now. <laughs> right. I mean, it would be nice, especially like with with the Halo series, how some of, the, some of it overlaps story parts from like the different games that span out. You know, it would be nice to see like a full-fledged video like timeline or kind of a thing yeah a timeline thing like you know from bungie well i guess it'd be 343 at this point but you know it's just one of those things you know i don't know if i'd want to see a call of duty one because quite frankly i'm not really interested in call of duty's story well i don't think the stories necessarily go the together black ops do they? ones do like the black ops ones have so far oh okay you play as i was thinking it was mostly just different wars and like you're different i don't i haven't really played that many, right so so I mean, there's con there's consistency in some of the in the characters. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, overall, so far I'm really enjoying it. The control, like I said, the controls for me were going to be the hardest. Um, the night it's just kind of nice getting back into the PCs, uh, PC gaming. Um, kind of scratching that itch. I haven't played a first person. Well, this is this is a third person shooter, but it's you're almost, you're always locked in like the first person like mode, like gun mode. So. Um, but overall, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm kind of waiting for them to throw a whole bunch of shit at me. Like the f like about about 45 minutes and they do throw about five or six guys at you. And you've already got your stasis powers and you're just kind of like, you know, I'm still trying to get to learn because now you're pushing, you know, C is going to be your stasis and you got to aim as your right click. And then, you know, I'll tell you one thing, I do like aiming with the mouse as far as guns go. Like. The actual, I mean, I'm not very good at it yet, but I can see myself getting better at it, and I can see myself like liking it. Maybe not as much as the controller just yet, but I definitely like being able, like the freedom to, you know, okay, I want to aim here, so I'm just gonna push the mouse, you know, a quarter of an inch that way or a quarter of an inch that way, you know. Mm, I've heard a lot of people like shooters on PCs. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know if it'll, if it'll overtake my love for the controller, but I definitely can see the appeal. Um, I've really never played 
a first person shooter that I've actually liked or a third person shooter. Um, and that might be the thing. Like I can't stand third person shooters on the controller. Like I don't, I don't like gears of war. I just feel like it's too slow. And with, you know, with, um, uh, dead space, this, you know, this is a, per, this is a prime example of, you know, this might fill that itch. Maybe I play my third person shooters on the PC. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, and Angel, I know Angel has no um, no plans on ever playing it whatsoever. No. He probably this is probably a game you'll never watch. No, probably not. I've watched scary games before, but which scary games have you watched? You um, watched me play The Darkness with the tentacles that came out the dude's arms with the the heads or whatever. Some of it. I, I would say I watched more scary games like back in like high school and college. Okay. Like what? Anything in particular comes to mind? Some of the Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Fatal Frame. Was that one that I tried to get you to play for the PS2? Yeah, we bought that one. Um, yeah, that that actually has a... You never really, I don't think, got into it very far, but it's no, got really. a really cool story that's really kind of creepy. Um, uh, I believe I've seen some Silent Hills. Silent Hill. I mean, the only Silent Hill that I played was Silent Hill The Room, and that one was one of the weaker ones. There used to be, oh, I forget, there was a PC game way back, like, seventh grade that w- we used to think was so scary. My girlfriends and I would play it. Doom. My, no. It was, like, Alone in the Dark or something. Yeah, like, Alone I, in the Dark. I, I don't know. Like, it was kind of like, it wasn't like a text-based game or something like that. It, it, whatever it was, was a text-based game, and kind of like Hugo's House of Horrors. Did you ever play that? Mm-mm. All right. Well, like, um, I think you'd be like, you know, go in the house and you have to find it, like type, find the key and you'd have to like look and try to, f- and like you, it, you know, you'd say go into the dining room and it would like just pop up like a picture, really pixelated, bad, not good <laughs> graphic, but like a guy might like pop up with a little knife or something and we would scream running out of the room. Why that was so scary, I don't know. I, it was just more the element of surprise kind of thing. But <laughs> it's because the internet's desensitized us. You'd go into the, the bathroom and there'd be like this, pi- like super pixelated picture of a girl dead in the bathtub. Like yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. It and it. I don't know. I don't really remember. But we had like nicknames for ourselves that we made out of that game. Pre gamer tags. <laughs> yeah, actually, we would kind of we we made a little symbol for ourselves, and huh. that was like Corey, Emily, and myself. We would uh, that's how we would address like our notes that we'd write to each other in school and stuff. Oh, very secretive. Yes. Well, that's cool. So um, I I'll probably be able to because f- I'm on like chapter f- four or five. I'll probably be able to finish um, Dead Space by next week. So I'll have like a I'll have more to talk about as far as that goes. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to try and track down a copy of uh, Dead Space 2 um, and see if I can't complete that as well. But uh, at any rate, you know, uh, we've got um, a couple things coming up. We've got uh, Pixelation uh, Reborn coming uh, coming April 13th. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff planned for that. Uh, we've got a, a Swiss 1v1 magic tur- standard magic tournament. Um it's $10 to get into that. Uh, we've got a uh, box of cards to give away as far as packs goes. Um, I was thinking about including some of uh, the new Dragon's Maze. Oh, that reminds me. Let's talk a little bit about Dragon's Maze. There's been like nothing released I know, for but, yet? I know, the, but that's the best part. That's the best p- time to talk about something. When um, there's nothing released. Well, right. When there's nothing released, you can kind of speculate or whatever. Um so the one thing, so here's, so they released one guy, uh, one ogre, you know, a, a legendary ogre or whatever. Um, he's got, he attacks, all, attacks whenever possible. He's a 6-6. Six, six. He's got vigilance and reach. So um, flyers beware. But the interesting part to this guy, and he costs six, one red, one green, and four colorless. Uh, the interesting part is when you, ca- when any player, not just an opponent, when any player casts a non-creature spell, this uh, this legendary creature does six damage to that player. So, yeah. That's pretty badass. I mean, especially if... I mean, and it's... Obviously, it's the... was a Gruul clan or whatever. This is the red-green. Yeah. So, I'm trying to... You know, obviously, 
the clans are making a comeback. From what I read online, the um, there's guild the the guild there's guild mages there's and then guild mages and guild leaders. Um, was it guild yeah guild leaders I guess um, were in the Ravnica and Gate Gate Crash set, but the uh, with the Dragon's Maze what they're doing is releasing a guild master. So like it's the, this would be the the Gruel or Gruel I guess has an, however you say clan's guild master. So I'm kind of interested to see what the other ones were. They talked about how they've got a they had a they have a little bit better grip on uh, cipher co- spell, uh, spells and how how much they cost. So I'm like I'm wondering if cipher spells are going to come down as far as casting cost goes, or maybe if there's like a negative when you cast it or something like that because. Um, you know, for my money, the the oh, what was it? The black spears or what? Or the black shards or whatever? Dark shards is like three damage mm. to target player, and you, that was like a spell that cost four or f- no, it was five um, with cipher. Um, maybe like a downside to that would be you know when you cast a spell, you lose one life or something like that. So there's a little bit of a downfall for the player casting it. I'm not sure. I don't know what. What do you think? What do you? What would you like to see out of this new set? I mean, you played you played Orzov and Boros. Those are like your two claim the fames. What what would you like to see out of those two sets? Anything in particular? I'm not sure yet. I think I'll just be interested to see how the pre-release goes. You, uh, how when uh, you pick one clan and, and then you, it'll pick another. Um, you'll get you'll get to pick a clan, but then they'll put a clan pack in from. One that shares the, opposite, the same color. Yeah, the same color. So, um, if you pick Orzov, what is that? Silencia. That's in, is, is that the other? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna get black. You're gonna get um, someone with black or someone with white. Right from the opposite. Right. So from the opposite release. So if you pick Orzov, was what Ravnica? No, Orzov was not Ravnica. Orzov was, was Orzov Ravnica? No. No, that was Gate Crash. Orzov was Gate Crash. So you're going to get something from Ravnica. Right. So black, uh, black blue was Gate Crash. Black yeah. red. Radco. So Radcos. you could get Radco. Or you could get. Uh, what's the white one? Uh, uh, black uh, green. You could get uh, Gruul. No, no, that was. I Golgari. played that too. Golgari. You could get yes, yeah, so you could get Radcos, Golgari, and then things with white. What did they have? White Silesnia? Yeah, white or, green. Yeah, then Orzov. Or not Orzov, um What's the other one? Azoras. Azoras, uh, white, white blue. blue. White blue. So um So there's four different clans that you could get from the other side. Right. So it'll be interesting, you know, everyone that, that picks out like a guild box won't be getting the same. I mean, you, you didn't get the same stuff anyway because the booster packs were randomized. Right, but, exactly. But um, it'll provide, I think, even a, a greater... Um, uh, greater chance of staying within your colors is really what it is. Because that's the issue that people would have is, you know, yeah, you would pick like Boros or Demir, but you're, you'd have a guaranteed set of seven cards that were Demir. Not saying that you'd use all seven. I use three of my f- of my seven, and then you have f- five random pa- or four random packs, and it's like, well, if those four or five random packs are Boros, why the hell would I just why wouldn't I just roll Boros? Right. So it's two packs guaranteed to be you know the colors that you can use, possibly giving you your third color because you'll you know if you go uh, Boros and then. That's white red, and then on the other side in Ravnica, you'd get um, uh, Azoras. You'd be white, bl- right, red, blue. With well, they were blue. talking about three color creatures too. Oh yeah, that's right. The, we did see. I mean, and it might but not. That was way back. That was in December of like two years ago. Yeah. So there was um, people like pulling shit but away I believe apart. That was because the original Ravnica. Um, their final right they had they had some th- tricolor creatures which um would make sense considering you're gonna basically i think you know they're kind of trying to get you to play tricolor decks giving you two different clans you know white right. red and green or white red and blue you know, whatever the case might be um so it, it would make sense to do some kind of tricolor creatures in there which mm-hmm. would be interesting but. i'm looking forward to it i mean the the one thing that 
I I really can't. Uh, the one thing when they announce this this legendary creature and the mass the guild masters, I'm really looking forward to what the Demir one looks. You know what the Demir one is. Um, I want to of course want to know what the planeswalkers are. But um, then they release some M14 cards. Nothing real big, just a um, couple minor stuff. But uh, yeah. They, oh, they, we we can talk about the Dragon's Maze, like actual card, dra- uh, is it Dragon's Maze or Dragon or Maze's End or something like that. Basically, it's a mythic uh, mythic rare artifact. Um, you pay three, tap it, return it to your hand, and search your library for a uh, gate, put it in your hand. Um, its win condition, though, is if you have ten gates of different, uh, basically all ten gates, um, one of each of them, because you have to have ten different ones, plus this card, plus the uh, maze end, you win the game. So, you know, if you think about it, you've got to search for some mazes, and then you got to find a way to lay ma- uh, lay land into your from your hand into play. But um, you know, it's a, it's definitely one of those cards that you can. Again, like you said, it's going to be they're trying to get you to play tricolor game, tricolor decks this right. is you know if you've already got three of them in there you know you throw a couple more in just for support or whatever just to search for if you know if you don't get the cards in your hand that you need they're just discard you know discard 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 um but uh i don't know overall it'd be interesting to uh see them put an artifact in the artifact as that has um when your lands come into play they untap or whatever or when a gate comes into play untap it or whatever that would be kind of interesting to see, or you may play more multiple lands a turn. I could see them putting something like that under there. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're um, the night of that, the Friday before. I'm going to try and get um, someone to cover my shift for me, so we can actually partake in the Friday night magic. I'd like to see how my. Um, I don't know. I, I really like my blue. My mill deck but i don't think it would work very well um at friday night magic because it just doesn't have much defense but i think my black my black green deck is pretty strong i think i would roll with that one which one would what do you play what do you think you would play with my angels angels that's not, all i played last not, night not your vampires i don't know i've been feeling more of my angels lately oh okay i don't know it just depends just depends depends all right well guys um Hey, we got to we stretched that one out to thirty minutes. Bounce, bam, wham. Anyway, uh, we'll be back next week, uh, same time, Thursday, ten o'clock. Actually, Tuesday, ten o'clock. Today is Tuesday. Week hasn't started yet for me. Uh, Tuesday, ten o'clock. Um, you can check out our po- our older podcasts at uh, ballandchainpodcast.podbean.com. Um, Our YouTube page is up and running. Just search for Ball and Chain Podcast. If you cram it all into one word, you can find us immediately. Um, We're also on, or you can watch us live every Tuesday. Um, Go to uh, ustream.com slash channel slash Ball and Chain, or BC Podcast. Um, Or just do a search for Ball and Chain BC Podcast if you want to find us. But other than that, I don't got anything else to cover. You got anything else you want to talk about? I don't. I'm sitting here trying to figure out what the heck that game was that we played. Oh, the text-based game? All right, well. I know. It's killing me now. Awesome. I know. Maybe if I find it, I can find it. And Do you realize what you just said? Maybe yes, if I can I find know. it, I find it? Wow. All right, guys. We'll catch you next <laughs> week. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Night. <laughs>